It's not a secret that creative assets can greatly enhance the projects you're working on, whether that's adding grunge textures to a video or a lens flare to a photo. A simple addition can completely transform the final result, and that's probably why Adobe and many other companies sell asset packs to creatives. There are honestly so many companies pushing creative assets that it makes it daunting to know what you actually need versus what's worth the price or not. Don't even get me started on how annoying it is to download 100 paper textures just to only realize that you really just need one or two. Well, what if there was an easier, more useful, and more convenient way to do this? One that is as simple as just typing in whatever you want and then getting it generated instantly. That's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. We're gonna be using AI to generate creative assets instantly based on whatever project that we are working on. I'm super excited, I know you are too. All right, let's go. So we're going to be using Fucus, which is a completely free AI software that runs stable diffusion models in the background. If you have no idea what that means, I highly recommend you check out our previous video on generating unlimited uncensored images for free right on your computer. With Fucus, we can generate just about any image, but that doesn't make it instantly a creative asset. So how do we make sure that the images generated are actually creative assets that we can use in our projects? Well, to make sure that we generate useful images that can be used for compositing and graphic design, we can utilize a super simple trick with blending modes. If you set your layer to screen as the blending mode, all of the blacks will become transparent, which is super useful, especially when you're using things like lens flares, fire effects, particles, light gleams, and so on. So right here we have Fucus pulled up, which is just running in the browser, and I have two images that I already generated just testing this out earlier. Here you can see the prompt section, and in this prompt area I can type in anything that I want and it'll be generated once I click the generate button. On the side panel here we have some of the options to configure the style, and also change some of the model settings as well which I highly recommend if you're using Fugus to go ahead and play around with this so you can actually create a style that you like. Another really interesting feature is that we can also take in input images and direct our final result based off of these. But that gets a little bit more advanced, so let's keep it simple for now. So here I have in the prompt area, light leak, lens flare overlay, PNG stock it on a black background. Now, you probably can tell that we wanna keep this on a black background because of that blending mode trick. But another interesting thing that I found is that adding in the PNG and stock option helps it mimic some of the asset packs that are already available that it was probably trained on in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and click generate. And once I hit generate, you're going to see it start to form two images. But if we really wanted to have much more images generated, we can use this image number slider, crank it all the way up to 32, and you'll probably end up with a super fat pack of awesome stuff. Another really cool thing about doing it this way is that you already know that the images are going to be royalty free. So you're not worrying about any copywriting issues. And if ever you generate an image that you don't like, you can always just click generate again and you'll have something new. So that's really helpful and super useful, making this such a flexible tool to use when creating creative assets. Now, one huge caveat of doing this method is that by default, there is no way to generate a completely transparent background. And so using this black background trick is kind of a cop out. It's not foolproof just yet. And no AI model that I know of can actually generate images with transparent backgrounds. So I'm going to show you another really interesting tip and technique that's going to help you generate an image and then also remove the background or composite it into your scene more realistically than if you just slap it on. Now on the channel, we have used AI to help generate images for quite a bit but by default the images are never exactly what we want to use and that's because they are AI generated images and we do like to have some bit of creative control over the way that these get finalized. So a huge portion of actually incorporating AI generated images into our final works is going through the process of actually compositing in multiple elements, multiple effects, and really styling the image to exactly how we want it. So for example, in this thumbnail, you can see we have an AI generated character, but we also have these interesting fire particles, this light beams, some of the light leaks over here in the corner, and then also some color correction and blurring around the image. So this is a combination of multiple layers, which might look a little bit daunting, but trust me, once we get diving into this, it's not gonna be scary at all. 
So here we've actually duplicated one of the AI generated images multiple times. And this is this light gleam right here. So here I'm gonna go to focus. I think I have something decent to use. So let's go ahead and stop the generations. And here we have a bunch of different options of lens flares that we can use. So I kind of like this uh, blue and orange lens flare as well. So let's go ahead and download this. And then I'm gonna drag this into my composition so you can see what this looks like once it gets incorporated. So bam, you can see we have dragged in that new layer and by default it does have the solid black background and it does not have any transparencies so to fix that a simple thing that we can do is go over to the mode option and change this to screen and you're gonna see wow this uh, has already taken out the black background and we get this nice color effect another thing that you can do if you're doing something like a lens flare or something that's gonna be brightening up a scene as well instead of using screen you can use the add option which is gonna add the colors on top of the pixels below them so we get a harsher lighting effect and then to get some more fine tuning you can just go ahead and lower down the opacity. Another thing that you can do is actually leave this set to normal and we're going to be using a plugin for After Effects for Motion Array that I found super helpful and that one is a keying effect that removes stock background. So once I have this applied instantly you can see that we have that effect working. The background is removed and it really just took a matter of seconds. Now I may also go ahead and click add for the blending mode because I do like the way that the colors get added in and we can just position this anywhere that we want inside of the composition so I think maybe let's add this here underneath the line free I'll scale it down a little bit and just like that we have a brand new creative asset now as you can imagine if you were to generate a bunch of these you could also just make your own pack of about a hundred different lens flares but I highly doubt that you're gonna need that amount of variety so this definitely works for lens flares, but what about some other creative assets like particle effects? So I'm gonna go back to focus, and now if we wanna add in particle effects, all I have to do is change my original prompt to particles, and then let's go ahead and click generate and see how this results. So here we have our first image generated, and wow, this looks great. We have a lot of particles which have a mixture of both in-depth and out-of-focus and I think this is actually going to work pretty well. So let's go ahead and download this, drag it into our After Effects composition like we did earlier. And I'm going to change the blending mode to add, scale this up a bit. And right now it's looking kind of crazy because we have so many layers going on. So let's just focus on these two layers, which is going to be the image and our thumbnail. And as you can see, I have this asset now that if I wanted to go ahead and fine tune even further, I might make sure that it does not cross over our character's face. So I'll make a mask and subtract it. And then I'm also going to go ahead and feather out that mask so that we have a little bit of softer edges and it doesn't look like I drew a mask because we do want to make some of these things look very subtle. And just like that, we have added in out of depth particles to our scene that was not originally there and it did not take us a huge amount of time or sifting through a bunch of asset packs. So you can see this with it turned off and now here it is turned on. Wow, what a big difference it's made to the image. Now it doesn't just stop there because I know for us who do motion graphics, we're probably working with something that's moving. And for that instance, I would recommend to take a slightly different approach in that we don't actually need the black background. And instead we can focus on another technique. If I wanted to just focus on a paper texture or some sort of grunge texture to add a bit more character to some 2D generated vector graphics, I can do this by simply typing in paper texture, adding in the keyword stock and hitting generate as well. We're huge advocates of working smarter and not harder, especially when it comes to creating content because so much content has to get put out and surprisingly, it always seems like there's not enough time. So one of the great time saving techniques that we do is actually incorporate not just the AI generated images into our workflow, but also video templates and motion graphics presets and plugins for After Effects built by Motion Array. For example, earlier when I was trying to remove a background, I could go through the tedious steps of using something like key light and actually compositing out the background. However, Motion Array is a really useful tool. They do have some pretty useful built-in plugins such as the background remover. And also I'm a fan of the heat distortion effect, which helps us make our images look a little bit more realistic when we're compositing them. Another really cool feature is that they do have a handy plugin hub, which gives you easy access to all of their plugins, which work with Adobe After Effects, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, and more. So most likely whatever editor you're using will be compatible. They also feature short and sweet tutorials for each plugin so you're not guessing what it does and how to work it. 
Another really great thing about Motion Array is that they have all of these awesome motion graphics templates, which you can download a project file instantly if you see something that you like, and then start to incorporate those assets into your projects of your own. For example, they have this really cool pack of 30 scribble elements. They also have things like grunge textured backgrounds that are already animated and just saves you another step in the process. Now, of course, it does mean that you're probably going to have to pay for this extra time saving and usefulness. And the cool thing about them is that they do have a free trial, but their pricing is also pretty competitive as well with some of the other options available. Really great about this as well is that it doesn't just include or motion graphics templates, but it actually has stock footage that you can use. Really awesome music, soundtracks, sound effects, presets, photos, and a whole bunch more. So I highly recommend if you guys are interested in saving time on your projects to check out Motion Array. Okay, so back to the paper textured images. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here, I think this image works pretty well if I wanted to add this to a footage as an overlay. However, I'm not too much a fan of this one here because we have this strange depth of field effect going on. I could actually just keep generating more until I find a subset of images that I find decent. And then once those are done, we're gonna do the same exact process and drag this into After Effects, compositing it and using the blending mode options. And instantly you can see that we have some pretty cool effects on a semi-boring animation. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And of course, if you guys sign up with Motion Array, they are partnering with us to offer you guys an awesome $50 discount for an annual plan. So make sure to click the link in the description to check it out. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might also want to check out this video right here, which talks about more of using AI inside of your creative projects. There's a whole lot of crazy stuff that you can do to save you time and help you flesh out some of your creative ideas much faster, some of the earlier traditional methods. So go ahead, check out that video. Anyways, Thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.